So in anticipation of the new Jason Bourne movie coming out in a few months, which I'm very excited for, I'm going to be re reviewing the first three Bourne films, which are actually some of my favorite action films of all time. The Bourne trilogy is actually three movies, so I actually have to, I'll hold up the case here. It's, um, where is it? The Bourne Identity, Supremacy, and Ultimatum. Those are the three. God, he looks pissed off here. So the first Bourne movie came out in 2002, and it starred Matt Damon. And a lot of people didn't like that, actually. A lot of people thought, you know, that was ridiculous. You know, the person from Goodwill Hunting, you know, and, uh, you know, like Talented Mr. Ripley, stuff like that. You know, he was in a lot of dramas at the time, and people just didn't really see him, you know, doing action movies at all. And actually, there's even some people that made a whole bunch of fun of, fun of him. I'm sure you've heard of this on Team America, you know, Matt Damon. There's that, and people just made a lot of fun of him, basically. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Ah, ah. But when the movie came out, it basically blew everyone away at the time. You know, it basically it shocked everyone, and he was really, really good in it. The plot of the movie is actually very simple. It's just about a guy who wakes up, you know, and doesn't know who he is. He basically knows nothing about himself, where he came from. He doesn't even know his name at all. He knows nothing. Who are you? What's your name? What's your name? I don't know. Oh, God. Just, you know, not knowing who you are is a very, you know, terrifying thought. I mean, I would hate that, to wake up and not know who I am. And that just, it makes it feel really human in a way. As it goes on, you kind of learn that he's an assassin, basically says that he chased the man off the boat and shot him twice in the back. It says I'm an assassin. He worked for the government and 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 there's just, there's just this kind of mystery surrounding this whole thing but I do have to admit you know back then it probably was a mystery if you watched if you haven't seen the movie and you'd watch it and you were to watch it now it's probably very obvious he's an assassin. Um, there probably isn't much mystery. No one actually mentions that he is one if you Pay attention to the movie when there are all those government scenes. No one actually says, you know, our assassin Jason Bourne is out there. No one really says that. You know, you know that he's powerful. You know that he's something to be dealt with. But they never really say it. But it is kind of obvious now. Um, but it doesn't. That doesn't really pull the movie down. No one thing I like about the Jason Bourne character so much is actually how much he doesn't like violence. This is an action movie about a character who really actually doesn't like violence. He's really forced into this because if you look, especially in Born Identity, you can see how he doesn't want to use a gun. He leaves a gun behind. When he, you know, when he gets all the money and passports, he takes the gun out. Same thing later on, he like throws a gun away. Same thing later on, he disarms the gun, and I didn't either. It's one thing you can see, is how much this guy doesn't want to be involved in this. But again, it really shows just how human he is. And that even though, you know, he's been taught all these skills, there just there is this, this part of him that doesn't want this violence. And he does kind of have to embrace it as the Bourne movies go on. He still never likes it. He still even chooses not to kill someone in Ultimatum. It's still, you can see, and that's actually one of the things I'm worried about in the newer Bourne movie. Like, in the new Bourne movie, Bourne is like shown with guns everywhere. Like, he, he shoots over this SWAT car with a shotgun. He's like pointing a gun at a guy, so he's like, the next bullet in your head! He like screams that out. It's like, that doesn't seem like something Bourne would say. And 
I've heard arguments that maybe that's because he has all his memory back. Maybe he really is David Webb now. Maybe he isn't exactly who he was. And maybe that's the maybe that's the point of the newborn movie. Is that he's just so pissed he's been punching people out with one hit. Maybe that's kind of the point. We'll just kind of have to see. But it does worry me a little bit because that's a huge part of the Bourne character. It's how he's thrown into this violence, but he doesn't like it, and that's just. I think that's one of the truly great things about the true about the Bourne the Bourne character. This is one really good. See an identity when he just cannot kill this person. He can't shoot this this fa this guy, this father, in front of all his kids. It's really a scene that just it shows how human Jason Bourne really is. And basically, of course, you know, as the movie goes on, Bourne meets a girl who is Murray. And basically one thing that you have to really, really like about their relationship is how how natural it is, you know. It doesn't feel forced. It's not really over-sexualized in, in any kind of way. It just really feels natural. And what I really like is if you pay attention at the end of the movie, when Bourne comes back for Marie, how they just kind of, how they hug each other, and they don't kiss, if you notice that. And I don't know, I've always liked that. It's really just proof that it's natural. The movie also has a very good pace, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really stagger at all. It always is moving at a good pace, and even, in it, this movie really plays out more like a drama than an action movie, but still, it knows that it is an action movie, so it doesn't take like 10 minutes in a scene. You know, like there's this one scene where one of the people says to Bourne, you look at us, look what they make you give, which is a great line. It really actually sums up the whole trilogy. It's a great line. Look at this. Look at whatever you give. You know, what he could have said is, you know, these people, they took my family, or they took away my life, they took away my family, they took everything from me, you know, no, 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 it could have gone on for a minute, instead it's just that one line. And that's something you have to really commend them, these movies for. Um... And it's just like the dialogue, for the most part, is written so well. I mean, there are a few moments where you have some really stupid and cringy dialogue in the Bourne movies, and it does come up a few times. Um, like in the new trailer from the new Jason Bourne movies, like, what does he say? He says, oh yeah, we've been hacked. Could be worse than Snowden. And that's just, that's terrible dialogue. That's really forced. That's really cringy. We've just been hacked. Could be worse than Snowden. But for the most, for most of the film, the dialogue is really, really good. And that's something that a lot of action movies suffer. A lot of action movies, you know, bad, really bad plots, bad dialogue. It's just laughable. But this movie, it's really, you know, these movies are really smart. You know, and this movie is directed by Doug Lyman, so it has, it doesn't really have shaky cam. People always say this one has that. It, this one doesn't really have that. That's more when green grass comes in in 2 and 3. This one doesn't really have that. What this one does have is a lot of quick cuts. But they're all, it's all handled really well. You can see what's going on. It doesn't confuse us. I mean, there have been some movies where this, the quick cuts are terrible, like the, like the Taken movies, for example. It looks horrible in the movies. It's just all cluttered, it's messy, you can't see what's going on. But here, it's used in a way that's appropriate, it's not trying to hide anything. I mean, nowadays, it is really overused. Like, if you see movies like Hitman, Agent 47, The Transporter Refueled. I see what you're thinking. 
losing and I hate it. Oh, um, it just it goes on and on and on. It's it's awful. Taken three, especially that was in. There's so many movies that just use this trick, and it, just, it doesn't work. But it really works here. You know, for this movie, this is definitely my least favorite out of the three. But that isn't saying much. These are all three some of my favorite action movies ever made. So the, I would really have to nitpick. But there are actually a few bad things about it. Well, for one one thing that would be a problem is if you listen to the. The fight, one of the fight scene, the Born Identity, it goes into the sound effects. They are really, really outdated. In fact, when they're like they're throwing punches and things, it sounds like a cartoon. It sounds really bad. But it's just it. The fight is so good that it just it doesn't really ruin anything. You know, it's still intense. It's still shot well. The soundtrack is great, so everything else really makes up for it, and it doesn't really ruin anything. Now, another complaint is that the action isn't on par with with two and three. It's not. It's not nearly as good. It's not. It's not on the same level at all. Now, as I say, the action sequences are great, but they're just kind of they're kind of bland when you can compare them with two and three. Maybe it's because Greengrass isn't directing those. Because if you just watch the car chase in um, the first one. It's just kind of bland when you compare it with 2 and 3. It just doesn't really hold up all that well. The movie has this, this is probably the last complaint I have, and again, I'm nitpicking right now, would be when Bourne jumps off the, those, that staircase at the end. It's just really, it takes away from the gritty feel of it. It's trying, like, it's trying to make Bourne look really cool unnecessarily, but it takes us out of the scene, and it just, it doesn't exactly work. It just, it, it feels really unnecessary, and it's not realistic at all. Despite it trying to be smart, how he uses the him as a cushion, but it just doesn't work. And it's just like if it had just had him get to the top of stairs and he shot him then, it would have just kept it feeling more gritty. But again, I'm nitpicking. It really isn't a big problem, but it is pretty cool. Identity is definitely a, one of the, my favorite action movies. It is fantastic. So the second, the second film in the Bourne's, <clears throat> the Bourne trilogy is the Bourne Supremacy, and this one is definitely my favorite out of the three. I think it's the best, probably some of the best action sequences ever made, in my opinion. They're gritty, suspenseful, you know, and Bourne is just really vulnerable in a way that just it really makes it really suspenseful. Like there's one scene where Bourne is shot through the shoulder, you know, he's tr trying to escape the police and it just, it's really, really suspenseful. Um, and that's something a lot of movies have a problem with nowadays. Like the main character is just so good at basically everything he or she does that it just makes it boring to watch. And that's actually probably one of the problems I had with The Force Awakens. And I, I know a lot of people like that movie, but for me, it just at the end, it just it didn't have that vulnerability or suspense that it that it needed. And that can really, really hurt movies, in my opinion. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with showing at the beginning of a movie a character that a character can kick ass. There's nothing wrong with that. We need you to come in. Are you kidding? I'm working. This takes precedence. I'm in the middle of an interrogation. This moron is giving me everything. I did. Yeah. Let me put you on hold. <laughs> But 
the character does have to be challenged at some point by someone. If a character is not challenged in a movie, it's it doesn't work. It it won't work. That's just that that's one of the storytelling one oh one. You that has you have to have a character be vulnerable. And that's something this movie really gets right. So the this movie is uh it's directed by Paul Greengrass and he uses a lot of shaky cam. I know a lot of people didn't like that back in two thousand four. People don't like it now. Um and it just it got a lot of made a lot of people feel sick in the theaters. I heard some people like threw up in the theaters or something you know, stuff like that because it just made them sick and queasy. Um but in my opinion, the shaky cam in this film is really used well. It's used in a way where you can tell what's going on. An example would be if you're watching that fight scene in the Born Supremacy. Um, if you if you watch that fight scene, you can you can see that the camera's following everything. It may be a little bit shaky or a lot of cuts, but you can see everything. You can see everything. Like for example, you know, Born's fighting this guy. You know, he knocks the knife out of his hand, and the camera pans down, you can see that happen. It's not like it's shaking all over the place. It's done in a organized way where all these little movements are are planned out so it ends up working. And he doesn't use a shaky cam to hide a director or actor's inability to do action. He uses it in a way that really just enhances it and makes it more suspenseful. So, I mean, there have been a, a lot of people have tried to imitate this too, and it has not worked at all for them. I mean, there's just one terrible, terrible fight scene from a movie called Alex Cross. It is so bad. The camera's just like shaking like this. It's like right with this. That's what it looks like. It's It's terrible. It's, it's, it's awful. <laughs> and it's just, you cannot see a thing. There's no, there's no brains in it. It's just a guy doing this with a camera. That's all it is, and it should, it does not work. And actually, there are a few other movies that this art form or style really has worked. I mean, um, I mean, the only other example I can think of right now is a movie called Safe House, which, it wasn't anywhere near as good as the Bourne movies, but there's, the action sequences in that movie, you can still see what's going on. There's just one actually really tr good fight scene that looks like it fits right in with the Bourne movies. when the the shaky cam or well not just shaky cam but quick cuts is when there's an example when Bourne runs in front of a train and there's just like three or four cuts there's a lot of cuts but you can just see it's used just an expertly way you know there's just this expertise to it that it just really works now there are there are a few instances where the shaky cam doesn't quite work there's one example where Bourne is runs during the Bur there's a Berlin chase and he runs and he throws two guards over or through two police over and you can't really see the camera just goes like this you can't really see but 90 percent of the time that she came on this movie is great it really works and that's quite something and then what also what makes his action sequences so good is that they're they're smart they're really, really smart. So mindless action scenes just really bother me, where it's just a whole bunch of things blowing up, or nothing really is happening on screen. It's just things blowing up, like a car just driving really fast, a guy running. It's like, it's kind of, it gets boring after a while. But see, in this movie, the action sequences are really smart. Like, for example, there's, in the, again, in the Berlin chase, he, he wants to escape on the train, right? But he gets to the train. The train isn't ready to leave yet. He still, he looks at his watch. There's, like another five minutes and the police are right behind him on that bridge so he 
has to stall for five minutes. What he does is he runs right as a train, goes by and blocks the police. He jumps off onto a boat, which stalls him for a few minutes where he can get back on and get onto the train. That's really, really smart, and that's intense. And also, like, he jumped off the bridge, he broke his leg, he's, like, limping. It's really smart and really intense, and that's what action movies are missing today. It's just that smartness in an action scene.